Hello, folks. Welcome back to Let's Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. I was about to say really, but I don't need to modify it this time. We're going to tackle day one in the city right quick. I'll leave off at the entrance to the next mission, St. Edgar's Eve. So let's get started. One thing to mention about the city sections, there's technically infinite loot because people walk in with an infinite number of pickpockets. I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to go for everything that's always there. We got a new objective. What is it? Go see your fence, Heartless Perry, in Black Alley to sell him the Bloodline Opal. And if you go to your map, you'll notice you have a map of South Quarter, the district of the city that we're in. We also have a map of the city at large. South Quarter, for whatever reason, is over to the west. Stone Market is north. Aldale is east. Old Quarter is in the center, and the docks are actually to the south. Whatevs, it's all good. We got a map of Stone Market, too, but that's not totally relevant yet. We're inside Garrett's building. It comes out to the fountain and the passage to Stone Market. Down the street a bit, there's a well, a passage to the docks. This is the prison, Pavelock Prison. You'll only go in there if you die in the city streets, one way or another. I might do a bonus video at the end showing you how to get out of Pavelock if you get stuck in there, but I'm never planning on getting caught in the streets. Anyway, there's a city watch station here, market stall here. The red handprint is where fences and stores can be found, in this case in Black Alley. Anyway, as I was saying, inside the city sections, there's procedurally generated loot which you can find literally an infinite amount of that I'm going to ignore I'm going to get everything that's there every day that respawns over and over again so with that let's go ahead and get started it's not much but it's home so over here I kind of like Garrett's apartment seems classy to me anyway he's got his wall of practice locks here. He starts out with that one. I'm not sure what it is, but it's just a left, right, left. Three stages. The first time you're in here, inside the chest, you can find a noisemaker arrow. On the mantle, you can find a flash bomb. On the table, you can find another flash bomb, as well as one broadhead arrow. If we head out here... I'm going to try not to be seen or heard, even by friendly characters. This guy's comments are proximity triggered whether or not he sees me. I think so, anyway, but... Where could they be with that dinner of mine? Oh, it's just you. See? I was... At first I thought somebody had broken in or something. Well, good evening. See, my light gem was totally dark. So here's the landlord's place. We'll break in here first. It's a five-stager. It's left, down, left, up, down. In here, if you open the chest, there are two broadhead arrows. On the desk, there's a ruby goblet here on day one. There's also something we should read. Journal of Z Wicket. Tuesday. Finally got the rent money from Garrett, the tenant across the hall. Just in time, too. But taff it all, these payments are draining me dry. Why is he blackmailing me? I'm not a rich man. I put the rent money in with the other coins I've managed to gather up and deposited them as the blasted low life instructed underneath an old sewer grate down in Black Alley. I can't take much more making payments every single day like this. Too bad Mr. Wicket has to pay money to his blackmailer. Too bad for his blackmailer that I know where the drop is. So the new note is just telling us that our landlord has been hiding blackmail money under a sewer grate in Black Alley. So I'm gonna wait for the homes there to pace away. Because we're about to, well, if he catches you in the landlords, he'll alert and attack, but that's not very likely because the landlord's office isn't part of his patrol route. He's far more likely to catch you breaking into one of these other two apartments. If I were captain, I'd have a thing or two to change around here, yes sir. We want to keep him unaware of us. Because I should try to relax. Relax. Right, left, 
Left, right. Well, he's aware of me now. So I probably need to wait a while before I try to move in on any of the apartments. Reason being, if I trespass and he's aware of me, even if he doesn't see me doing the trespass, if he's currently aware of my presence, he'll flip right into combat mode. So, this one's just a left, right, left. Captain Myers. We'll do this one first. If he's a captain, then I'm a... Well, I don't know what... He's no captain, not a good one anyway. That's so, we got in here, no problem. This guy's asleep. The only thing of interest are two copper candlesticks on his mantle. Which two? I'm a... One needs to... So, same basic idea here, I just want to get into the other apartment, I'm going to wait until he's headed down the hall the other direction. All is well. The woman here's awake. I'm gonna ignore her purse because it's procedurally generated. It's not always there. Let's read this first. Henry and the Hag. Once there was a little boy named Henry who lived with his mother and father. Henry was good most of the time, but sometimes he disobeyed his parents and went out wandering the streets alone at night. He was hoping to find food for his parents who often went hungry to make sure Henry had enough. One night, Henry came upon an old gray lady. She asked him to help with a bundle which was too heavy for her. Henry wanted to help the old woman, though he couldn't see her face under the gray hood. When Henry stooped to lift the bundle, he did see her face. It was the hag. When the hag was done eating him, all that was left of Henry was a pile of bones and clothes. When his parents found him the next day, his mother wept. Oh, if only he had listened to me and not gone out alone at night. The end. The only thing that's static or constant, not procedurally generated, is the goblet on the mantle. So I'm gonna grab that when she walks over here. To take the season paid entirely too much. Now I'm gonna wait here for her yellow alert because she'll notice that her goblet's missing. serving poached fish. We've been robbed! Hello? Hello? You? Okay, she's done. I shouldn't be surprised if it snowed. Not at this point. Someone should really do something about this. What's the point of living in the city if one is still at the mercy of foul weather? Lazy lugabouts. Makes my blood boil. They'll get theirs sooner or later. And that's it for Garrett's building, so we can go ahead and clear out of here and head out to South Quarter. Ah, the city. Obey the law, and there's no need to worry about the residents. So then I said, but I can't The city watch are the guys who want to lock me up, though. The whole place under Gotta keep my eye out for them. Quarantine. And I'm just going to do a real save here in this new spot, and that'll be that for now. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Welcome back, everybody. Couldn't tack. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I don't know what happened to the recording just then. Apologies. Couldn't do the whole city section in one sitting. Had to go to other things, but you should be able to get it in one video. I'm just loading the save, 
right as I exited Garrett's building in the South Quarter on the first day out in the First thing we'll do is listen to a conversation. We do have a single key to pickpocket off one of the talkers before they're done. Quarantine. I know. Same thing happened to me. I can read so I could see for myself. I asked why, but the city watch wouldn't give me the time of day. What do you think? Some kind of plague? That's what I thought. But then... I was talking to Jesse down over the tavern and he says that some kind of ship come into the docks. Something wrong with it. The quarantine is so that... And this is Jesse who said it, so take it for what it's worth. That otherwise the undead would be everywhere. <gasps> everywhere? I, I wonder if Natalie is okay. She lives over in the docks near the Bloody Ears Tavern. I know. <clears throat> and Grace O'Malley too. Mind you, Jesse could be wrong. Sure, he's been wrong before. That's, that's right. Everything's probably all right. Yeah, the city watch is just being careful. Doing this quarantine thing is a precautionary type step. Yeah. So once they're done, there are two water arrows in the fountain. These will be here every day. Read this little plaque. South Quarter Fountain. Near this site, the first stone was believed to have been laid in the building of the city. You'll notice that the way to Stone Market is currently blocked. If you head over here, mantle onto this crate, onto the awning, and then onto this wooden edging, you can then get over here, mantle onto this metal pipe. Somebody gave me a tip. I guess this is as good an opportunity as any to try it out. Garrett's doing his flying bug. They told me I could fix it if I just drew an arrow, and they were right. So thank you to 96 Hypnotoad for that tip. Once you get onto the pipe, you can, even though you can't see it, you can reach the gas arrow floating above the arch. Gas arrow. The gas arrow releases a burst of gas which will knock your opponents unconscious if the gas reaches their face. That gas arrow will also be there every day. If you descend the same way you came, you shouldn't take any damage. And like I said, I'm not going to go after them, but I'll point all of the cornerstones and rust mites out to you. So, right now I'll go ahead and say that there's a pagan cornerstone right here. That's one of three in South Quarter. That's the arch to Stone Market. And then if you head here in the fountain, over in the southeast corner, there's a rust mite. So I'm going to head through here now. If you head over to the left towards the well, hidden inside this bush are two broadhead arrows. They'll be there every day. Now the next thing I'm going to do is loot this house. One of our conversers lives here. People will notice you opening and closing the door, so even though I have the key to the door, I prefer to enter by mantling up the barrel, mantling into the window. Oh, Garrett's flying again. I can't tell you how handy it is to have a way to fix that that doesn't require quick load, though. You may then mantle into this room. If you open the chest, there's a healing potion and a flash bomb inside. Those will not be there again. As you move into the main room, there's a silver knife on the table. That's only there once. There's a fire arrow in the fireplace. That's here every day. Fire arrow. The fire arrow damages your opponents with a burst of flame. You can also shoot it into oil to start a fire. I guess I should mention too, since I wasn't at the time, that uh, inside Garrett's building, the only thing that's there every day is the two broadhead arrows inside the landlord's apartment. The landlord doesn't have any repeating loot. 
However, what he does have is a new piece of loot every day, assuming that you took whatever was there on a given day, he'll have a new piece the next day. Now we'll move into this bedroom. Now that we're trespassing, he'll alert if, because we're not supposed to be in here. So I'm going to wait till his back's turned again. He has one healing potion on his mantle and one jade necklace in that chest. Neither of them will be there the next day. They're both only here once. Am I the... <gasps> What's that Whoa. I'm seeing? I need to pay better attention. I didn't realize he had turned around. <clears throat> so it seems like he's going to green alert to me opening and closing the chest. I will say that those alerts can easily be avoided if you get to his house before he does. Anyway, let's grab the potion now. Plot out how we're gonna get to that necklace. I think it might be best to move in behind him while he's at the fireplace. Even though he'll hear it open Was that shut. a noise? So that jade necklace is worth 50. And he green alerts to the chest opening and closing, so. Like I said, you can avoid those alerts by beating him here. Uh, what's the point? I've heard worse sounds than that, anyway. But, uh, for my purposes in this playthrough, that is a supreme bust. I'll take it since I was too slow getting to the house. Let's sneak back out of here. There's one other piece of loot that we need to get inside this house. And I'm not sure... I think it's probably better for us to get it from down here. There's a passage behind the chair in his bedroom. You have to push the chair out of the way to do that. But we can just grab the diamond and the chandelier from on top of the table. That diamond also does not respawn. This is the only time you can get it. It's worth 150 loot. <laughs> so let's head back out into the streets. I'm going to loop down here. Show you two things while I am down here. First... This is the passage to the docks. No passing, quarantine area, by order of the city watch. No inquiries, please, violators will be prosecuted. The second rust mite and the second cornerstone are right here together. I think that's our escape route from Pavelock Prison, if we ever get locked in there. Anyway, here is, excuse me, Pavelock Prison. You'll only go in there if you die in the city streets. So like I said earlier, I might do a bonus video where I get captured on purpose just to show you the escape. But if you play correctly, you'll never be inside there. So as we come up here to the watch station, Garrett will make a comment first. Those are City Watch. You can tell by their insignia. They're the guys I have to look out for. So we need to get up into the watch station. There are two broadhead arrows here. They are here every day. I need to get to where I can see his facing. Wait for him to turn. Ah! He could see better than I thought, I guess. Drunk guys are you drunk guards, you can tell by the way they wobble like he was doing. Are usually close to being non-entities. I'm a little surprised he spotted me, but Oh well, no, no real worries. We just need to. Get out when his back's turned. No problem there. Now just creep up through these shadows. He won't see you. Move toward the market stall to the right. No comment from the guards, that's good. Now here on this stand, these three Good copper day. coins are respawning. They show up, they will be here every day, unless you kill this merchant. 
then the coins will stop appearing. With that, we are ready to hug this corner to avoid comments from the Watchmen and move right into Black Alley. This is Black Alley. The red handprint is the mark of illegal establishments. So right here in this sewer grate, there's a water arrow that's here every day. This is also the drop site mentioned in the landlord's note. There will be a purse with 50 gold in it here every day. That's also re reappearing loot. Since we're here, I'll hit the first door on the left. Evening. That's the store for South Quarter. Ah, sir. Welcome. Is this your first time visiting us? Take your time. Peruse. Enjoy. Shopping should never be a rushed experience. I just wanted to introduce you to the store. Eat. There are four stores, and each one sells a different type of elemental arrow. You can buy broadheads, noisemakers. We hope you find everything you need. With this quarantine, we're cut off from our regular suppliers for a while. Flash bombs and healing potions at all the stores. Eventually, you'll also be able to get oil flasks, I think holy water, and gas bombs, and mines. We hope you find but, uh, everything you need. With this quarantine, we're cut off from our regular suppliers for a while. Anyway, if you're not bothering to not shop, I'm never going to buy anything except practice locks and the climbing gloves, but the South Quarter store, the well-equipped thief, is the one that sells water arrows. So... You have to be careful entering and leaving stores. If there are hostels outside, people keep moving around while you're inside. That can create serious problems. Oh my feet! Anyway, can't even tell if it's corn. Here in the bent or in the bush to the right, there's a moss arrow that's there every day. Moss arrow. The moss arrow creates soft patches of moss on the ground. Shoot it on the loud surfaces underfoot to move over them silently. Awesome. And here is the South Quarter fence, Heartless Perry. Let's go in and visit him. Garrett, Taff, didn't expect to see you. Haven't you heard? Lady Elizabeth from Rutherford Castle is after you. She was in here with some goons, asking a bunch of questions about that opal. They did a job on me. See the bruises? Had to give them a name. I guess before I knew that I'd given them yours. Which is the truth, ain't it? Anyway, uh, I watch your back, eh, pal? Uh, about the opal. No way I can risk taking it now, but I know someone who can. A fence in Stone Market. Black Market Bertha. If I were you, I'd go to Stone Market to see her now, before those <coughs> goons find you. A anyway, I can still give you cash for whatever other loot you stole from the castle. Business as usual. And uh, no hard feelings, eh, Garrett? I mean, uh... Who's the one all beaten up? <laughs> anyway, Perry... Just so you know, I don't take artwork. You know, paintings and stuff. But I know someone who does. A fence over near the docks. Dahlia's her name. And all that arty junk's her game. Well, he just said what I was going to tell you. He will buy your gold and your gems. He will not buy artwork. Did you so. see? Those goons who beat me up barricaded the gate to Stone Market. Lady Elizabeth's goons. You got your work cut out for you, that's for sure, Garrett. So he'll buy all my metal and gems for twenty-four twenty-five, which is fine. I'll go ahead and sell it off. What? You robbed the whole block? This sure is a lot of merchandise. So our objectives have obviously changed. We need to deal with Lady Elizabeth and her thug so we can get into Stone Market, and then sell the Bloodline Opal to Black Market Bertha, the fence in Stone Market proper. Pretty straightforward. That pickpocket was randomly generated, that's why I'm ignoring it. So now we need to get all the way back to the gate to Stone Market. The gate will be raised now. There will be a conversation there. And we're going to encounter the first of many uh, melees in Thief 3, where AIs fight each other 
without any provocation from us. So, Lady Elizabeth has two purses with which she intends to pay her goons. I'm going to go steal the purses, obviously. I want the loot. Ultimately, she will end up in a fight with one or both of them. And that fight, like all fights, has the potential to spread if people hear it or if bodies get spotted. But that's not a bust because I'm not being seen or heard and I'm not, you know, forcing them to fight each other. It's a scripted event. Anyway, let's listen to them and steal the purses and then see where, see how things shake out for sneaking into Stone Market. Looks like Lady Elizabeth is here, with a couple of thugs. These purses are only here once, same with this note. M. Soon the opal will be mine. The fence told us the thief's name is Garrett and that he'll try for Stone Market, but my men have barricaded the gate and are ready for him. When I return to Castle Rutherford with the opal, I'll watch Julian and Ember suffer. For a time, anyway. Later, I'll poison them. Never leave loose ends. Lady E. One thing I forgot to mention is that the third cornerstone for South Quarter is in Black Alley. I'll be glad when this job is over. Let's go. Beating on Perry was fun, but it's the money that counts. And I guess you might be confused why I'm talking about cornerstones and rust mites. You can't do anything with them yet, so I'll mention them again once I can. And I don't want to give that witch time to change her mind. The money better be right. I'm bringing my knife, just in case. Hold on, you taffer. We can't go all at once. Who'd guard the gate? Uh, we gotta go up one at a time. That way the other two can keep a lookout for Garrett or anything suspicious. Make sure no one, and I do mean no one, gets through our barricade until the lady's opal is back in her hands. Else why would she pay, huh? All right, all right. Don't go all bossy on us. So now, if we creep back through this little hidden tunnel, you see Lady Elizabeth standing in there, and the first thug is coming to talk to her to get paid. Well, where's the money I was going to pay you with? The other fellow, your friend, he must have taken it. What? Not possible, you witch. You'll pay, one way or the other. You've not heard of my poison blade? How unfortunate for you. Aha! Running won't save you. I can run just as fast as you. Oh. That's enough. Show yourself. Well, I have to admit, that's very odd that he didn't turn hostile and she did. So anyway, that will probably flag as a body discovered. Might even flag as me being caught, but doesn't matter. As you can see, no one's aware of me. All he had to do was walk up some stairs and get his pay. Well, and then walk down again. We'll see what's taking so long. Okay. Whoever He's... it was, they've run off. And who needs them? Not me, that's for sure. 
So you can see the way that alert kind of spread out. Now he said he was gonna go in there, but he won't. He just stands there with his sword out. Anyway, with with all that settled, we're gonna sneak past him, and it's astonishingly easy to do. If you just hug the wall, you're shadowed enough to go right by him. As crazy as that seems. Finally, once you're through here, the third rust mite for South Quarter is here at the gate to Stone Market. And now we will head through to Stone Market Plaza. Stone Market is divided into two zones, but I'll go over the map on the other side of the load zone, so I'll see you there. Well, I've made it past Lady Elizabeth and her thugs, and now here I am in Stone Market. This district's known for commerce and corruption, with plenty of both for everybody. Most people come here for the stores, but I tend to do my shopping after everything is locked up for the night. There's the clock tower, one of the tallest buildings in the city, a good landmark day or night. And finally, the Stone Market Plaza. More vendors, more people. No doubt the City Watch will be keeping an eye out for pickpockets like me, though. Being a thief is never as easy as it sounds. Anyway, it's time for me to find this Bertha character and get rid of the Opal once and for all. I hope Perry was right about her. So here, we find ourselves in Stone Market Plaza. Big Bertha's place is marked on my map with the red handprint. That objective is ticked off. We still have to... Sell the Bloodline Opal to Black Market Bertha, the fence in Stone Market proper. Let's look at the map of Stone Market. We're here at the gate to South Quarter. Right in front of us is the Tavern. If we go past the Tavern, there's the Clock Tower and a landmark called Tursus Courtyard. To the, in the, sort of in the southeast corner is the Load Zone, which would take us to Stone Market proper, where our landmarks are St. Edgar's Church, the bread handprint, of course, that's where the store and the fence are. They're both in this alley behind the church. And this is actually the front entrance to the clock tower, even though the tower itself is listed as being in Stone Market Plaza. And there are stores. Plenty to do here in Stone Market Plaza loot-wise, though, so let's get started before we head straight to Stone Market proper. First... I'm going to walk up to the front door of the tavern just to read you the note. Tavern closed after dark. That of mean remember about that deposit. Hate to have all that cash around. Of course, for our purposes, that means the tavern's always closed because Garrett's never out during the day. This watchman patrols up and down the street, but pretty easy to slip by him, with no real issues. <sighs> I like to wait and follow him up the street, so that's what I'll end up doing. The first cornerstone is over there on that corner, and the first rust mite is here in this tunnel. As we head up here... Evening. You're a sight for sore eyes. I like to head to the right first. This tree, these bushes have a moss arrow that's here every day. If you head over toward Tursus Courtyard, this is the base of the clock tower. If you jump up to this vent, you can just reach a gas arrow that's here every day. There's some loot in Tursus Courtyard, but there's a note that'll direct us to it later, so I'm not going to grab it just yet. It feels more honest to get it after the game tells us about it. But one thing you should note is that up these <laughs> stairs is the second Rust Mite. There are two each in Stone Market Plaza and one each in Stone Market proper. 
There's a watchman patrolling out here. It sounds to me... There's the sign for Tursus Courtyard. Yeah, he's heading down to the south now, so we should be able to slip out behind him and grab another moss arrow that's here every day out of these bushes. Now, I'm gonna deal with Mr. Brent first. He has a purse that's here every day that's one of the most maddeningly difficult pieces of loot to get every time. But I finally found a way to get it that only entails first alerts. So wait here, but it's much easier to do on day one. It's a lot harder on all the other days. So wait until that watchman's headed away, then mantle onto the boxes. <sighs> uh, guess I better ch he must have either randomly turned his head or somehow heard me. So I'll let him open up a little more distance before I go for the crate mantle. Anyway, from the top of those crates, you can jump and mantle onto the balcony outside of Brent's apartment. So... Uh, it's me. It's Dave. Missed the jump and we can't have that. Anyway, I think I know what happened. I think I bumped into the crate and that might as well be shooting a gun. Guards will hear it every time if you bump into any of the objects that can move. So let's make the jump this time. Hello, it's me. Is that you, uh, Garrett? Now Indeed I do. I, um, um... What? What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. I, I just thought you looked different. That's all. It's, it's nothing. Hey, I'm the greatest thief that ever lived. I ain't concerned about appearances. Anyway, with all that thieving I do, I ain't got time for no baths or nothing. Oh, I see, yeah, completely understandable. Enough said, yeah? Anyway, let me tell you why I wanted to meet with you, Garrett. Yeah, get on with it. I, I got a lot of job offers, you know. You ain't the only merchant in town too uppity to get his own hands a bit dirty. Oh, of course. The object in question is of little monetary value, but has great sentimental meaning to me. Okay, going to the map wouldn't make them be quiet, but going to the menu screen does. The difference between day one and all the other days is this conversation taking place. The other days, Brent is just in his apartment, staring at the chest with the purse inside it, which makes it pretty difficult to get. But today, and today only, when the conversation is over, he's going to take a little stroll out to his balcony. As he's doing that, we can grab the purse with relative ease compared to all the other days. So we'll just listen to the conversation, which will give us a side mission, and then we'll nab the purse. It's... The Oran Cross Dagger. You've probably heard of it. A stylish golden number. And it's currently out of its owner's hands, being scheduled for repairs at Cothran's Armory. Uh, the Oran, uh, uh, a golden dagger, eh? Mm, sure, I heard of it. I'm Garrett, ain't I? Except it sounds plenty valuable to me. Well, it's not. The money I'll pay you to get it will be twice what it's worth. Anyway, it's one of a kind. You'd be hard-pressed to find a fence who'd manage it for you. All right, all right. Go on. As I said, it's being kept at Coffrin's Armory, in the basement safe. That's where you come in, Garrett. As a master thief, you should have no trouble with it. Once you get it, put it in the donations box outside that Hammerite place, St. Edgar's. I'll leave the payment in the same box, once I have the dagger. I think that about covers it. All right, Mr. Brent. And don't forget, if you want Garrett-type services, you gotta offer Garrett-type prices. So that's the famous Garrett, huh? Guess he's not as good-looking as I'd heard. So the note, of course, tells us that a thug has been hired to steal a valuable dagger from Cawthorn's armory tonight. He will be paid if he drops it into the donation box outside St. Edgar's. So once Brent goes outside, and the thug is gone, just move in on the chest, open it, grab the purse, Hi. close the chest. Brent will green alert when the chest well, is closed. I shouldn't worry so. That doesn't matter. 
Hmm, I thought I had room to get by him. I was gonna say, I don't think he stays out there. Hello? The green alert again when the door is no, opened. I heard something. Right, night after all. Oops. Brent won't care if we're on his balcony, so once I get onto the balcony, I can wait for the watchman to leave to close the door behind me. There we go. In and out, the only green alert, which is pretty unavoidable, is Brent hearing me close his chest. But whatever. So let's head back down now. I knew he was gonna see me. What I'd like to do is follow the watchman down the street. And from there, I will be able to loot the tavern. Yeah, you want a penny? Come in. If you wait in these bushes, you can slip in behind him. This moss arrow is here every day. There's the second cornerstone in Stone Market Plaza. And here is my preferred entrance to the tavern. It's up, right, left to pick the lock. Once inside the tavern, I'm gonna head upstairs first. There's a stationary guard. sitting in a separate room up here. On his table, there's a bottle of wine that's only there once. I'll grab that. And then as we head to the balcony overlooking the main room, you see there's a seated guard. There's one that patrols a short route back and forth. So when he walks away from the shelf, I'm gonna move in behind him. Those two copper coins are also only there once. So I will nab them, and then we'll tackle the downstairs. Captain said no, but what does he know? One of these days. No problem at all. Now the four pieces of loot downstairs 